In 2010, in this country, the Supreme Court of the United States tore down 100 years of campaign finance law and said, corporations, who we have just re-enriched, remember, corporations ran the global economy into the ground, banks ran the global economy into the ground, and then we said, in like, you know, the nobility of our humanity, we said, well, we will give you all the money back. We will take all of our money and give it to you. And we did, and the banks got all this money, and somehow they survived the global economic meltdown surprisingly well. And then they turned around and said, but you people are going to have to experience austerity because there's no money left because we have it all. And they had so much money that when the Citizens United decision comes along, followed by the McCutcheon decision and the Knox decision, which amazingly enough, in another triumph of the equality and decency of our political process, said, Corporations can get whatever they want, but unions have to get permission from their members to give, right? So it's like, in case there was any sense of how this, this thing's operating, they busted the floodgates. And so that room where we were all standing up in and we thought, wow, you know, this is our place. This is our democracy. They flooded the room with money. They put so much money in that thing that, that the short folks were actually having to struggle just to keep above that line. And a lot of folks just stepped out of the place. They stepped away because they said, you know, I love democracy, I want this thing to work, but, but this thing is so awful, so disgusting, so overwhelming that I'm going to step away. The United States of America has, since Citizens United came in, had a steady process of declining voter turnout. We now have the lowest voter turnout of any developed country in the world. In 2014, when you guys elected the Coldstone Creamery governor, in this country, there, I know you didn't, but, you know, can I just say, I don't want to deviate here. Yeah, he went out in June of, 2000, of last year, he flew out to the West Coast to hang out with the Koch brothers, and, and this should have been a warning to you, because he's out there with the Koch brothers, and he literally says, because he wants to impress him, he says, you know what kind of governor I'm going to be? Not making this up, we got a tape from inside the famous passage. He goes, I'd be mean, like a Scott Walker kind of governor. And I thought to myself, you know, did not we, didn't we spend a lot of time on MSNBC talking about why that's a bad idea? And so, anyways, all these guys say, look, you know what the vote, you know what I mean? 36% of people voted. So if you meet three people, two of them don't vote anymore, right? In meaningful elections. And here's the interesting thing, that was the lowest voter turnout since 1942. You understand, we lowest voter turnout since we were in World War II, when a lot of people had other things going on. <laughs> we have just beaten the hell out of this democracy. And that's what's happened over the last 40 years. That's the thing to understand. They took a look at that crowded room. They took a look at all of us who got in there, and they decided to create a system that would once more make us spectators, that would push us to the sides, push us out of the room, and even if we were in the room, that would make our values and our ideals and our needs meaningless. They warped our media. They warped our intellectual discourse. They warped our politics itself. And they created a democracy that works for them, not for the rest of us. And brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters, what they have done is an absolute destruction, an absolute assault on everything that your mothers and your fathers and your grandparents and your great-grandparents, and if you're an immigrant, everything that you came to this country for, they have beaten the hell out of it. And so many people have just said, I can't, I can't take this anymore. I'm stepping away. I, I'm going to put my head down. I'm going to try and, try and make do. And you know, if there's anybody who's thinking of voting, they got an answer for that. Because I don't know how many of you watched television before an election. You know, we got rid of our media. You know, our newspapers are thin as can be. Our radio stations are all syndicated. Our TV stations, it's just weather. Even in Phoenix, all they, in Tucson, all they ever tell you is the weather. So the, the, we, got the, we get our political information from political ads. They flood those ads in $10 billion worth of ads. $10 billion worth of ads in 2000. And 12, an overwhelming flow of that, and 90% of them in competitive races are negative. So you understand, if you turn on a television set, the primary source of information in this country, you turn that television set on, and you know what you hear? Don't vote. 
Now, I'd say it's don't vote for you and don't vote for you, but at the end of the day, all you've heard is don't vote. And a lot of people decide, okay, I, I was going to vote, but I think I got the message. But I don't think I fully explained it. Let me give you a sense, because all of my friends in corporate power, all my, I, I, I'm constantly drinking mineral water. And, you know, every elite person I know, they all say, they, they, they all say, well, you know, um, we should run government a little bit more like business. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. We should run government like a business. So let's imagine if we ran elections like a business. What would happen on Monday morning, the new Coca-Cola ad campaign? They say, you know, we at Coca-Cola create a fine product, but we'd like to inform you that over at Pepsi, at the Pepsi plants, they urinate in the vats. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Here's a health report. We got it right here. You know, it'd be like that little footnote down the bottom. And then Pepsi would come back the next day, and they'd have an ad saying, in response to the scurrilous attack from Coca-Cola, we'd just like to inform you that we make a great product, but over at Coca-Cola, there's a lot of evidence of vermin and rats swimming in their Coca-Cola bats. And they'll find a health report, and it'll say that. And then the next day, Coke will be up saying, oh yeah, Pepsi makes you a diabetic. And then, you know, Pepsi's back saying, yeah, well, Coke makes you fat. And by the end of the week, not a single American would drink Coke or Pepsi. And so why do we doubt that our political process that says, don't vote, don't vote, don't vote, everything's bad, drives our people away? So it's, you know, I would, I'm going to, because there's such an elite audience here, I'm going to use it. My babysitter is here. Uh, so I'm not going to say that it sucks, but, uh, but it's pretty bad. And so I, here's what we got to do. Because I know, I know how much you want it to be easy. I know how desperately you want me to come and say, if you will just fill out this envelope, or if you will just make this call, it's all going to be fine. But it isn't going to be easy. They are literally, they are never satisfied. They are literally, I know Arizona's always had a right to work law, right? But they're passing right to work laws in Michigan where they founded the United Automobile Workers. They're passing them in my home state of Wisconsin. You know, the fact of the matter is they are beating the life out of every institution that might possibly stand up to them. 